This is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be doing the number 20 from the AMC 10B of 2020. Now, I really like this problem on the test because it was a unique and creative approach for a 3D geometry problem. But without any further talk about the problem, let's just get into a problem so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let B be a right rectangular prism with edges, lengths 1, 3, and 4, together with its interior. For real r greater than or equal to 0, let s of r be the set of points in a three-dimensional space that lie within distance r of some point b. The volume of s of r can be expressed as a r cubed plus b r squared plus c r plus d, where a, B, and C, and D are real positive numbers. What is B, C divided by A, D? So this problem lays down a ton of information on us. It tells us about B, a right rectangular prism with edges lengths 1, 3, and 4. And it tells us that S of R is the set of all points in a three-dimensional space that lie within distance R of some point of the rectangular prism B. And this volume can be expressed as AR cubed plus BR squared plus CR plus D. And the problem asks us to find what these A, B, C, and D coefficients are and then divide BC by AD. So this problem is just kind of hard to look at. So let's try to get a visual of what it's talking about. Our first step would be to draw a 3D right rectangular prism with edges length 1, 3, and 4. So we can do that and then we can draw its extensions of R. So here we have it. Good old right rectangular prism B. This is how it would look like by default. So if we extend it such that we get a three-dimensional space, S of R, where there are only points that lie within distance R of any point on this rectangular prism. We're going to get this unusual figure. So I'm going to draw that out. So here we have my desperate attempt of trying to draw S of R. And even though it's nowhere close to perfect and it doesn't look exactly how you would visualize it in your mind. It still serves its purpose. It helps us draw a relationship between B and S of R. For one thing, we already know that S of R will contain all of B. As S of R is merely an extension of rectangular right prism B. Thus, it will already have right rectangular prism B's volume by default. And this volume won't be influenced by R. So the volume of S of R being expressed as AR cubed plus BR squared plus CR plus D, well, D is the only term that's not influenced by R in this expression. So thus, D must just be the original volume, which we can calculate by doing 1 times 3 times 4, which will give us original volume of 12. Thus, since this is the only value that's not influenced by R, we can say that D is 12. The next thing that becomes evident in this little diagram that I showed is that in S of R, each of the sides of right rectangular prism B is extended by R. So the volume of these extensions would just be the area of each of these faces 
times r and then add it all together. This is how we're going to get the bulk of it. We're going to get this extended upwards, this extended to the side, this extended below, this extended in front, and this extended on the other side in front. And from this, we are going to get that the second part, our value for C, since it only has one R influencing it, the R moving it out, is just the surface area of this original default right rectangular prism. And we can calculate the surface area quite easily using the formula that the surface area of any right rectangular prism is merely just two times the product of each pair of its sides. So one pair would be one times three. Another pair would be one times four. And another pair would be three times four. So adding this together, three plus four plus 12, and multiplying by two, we're gonna get 19 times two, which is 38. So now we've solved the interior volume of right rectangular prism B, and the volume of the extensions of the sides of right rectangular prism B. So now the only thing we're missing is the extensions of the edges and the extensions of the corners. And these will give us the R squared and R cubed terms and coefficients respectively. So first with the edges. As distance R away from the edges would be a circle, as if you look at it from the cross section of the line, which is a point, you're going to get a point which is equidistant from the center point of the line, which will give us a circle. This will form some kind of cylinder. However, since lots of the cylinder would have been already covered by these two sides, we're really going to get a quarter cylinder for each of these edges. So the extension of this line all the way from prism B would be a quarter cylinder with this edge. But the thing is, for each type of edge in a right rectangular prism, well, there are four of those same edges. So when we try to find out the volume of a cylinder, we would do pi r square h. And even though it might be tempted to divide by 4, as we're only getting quarter cylinders, we have 4 of each of these edges. So we're going to get whole cylinders, where h will just be each of these different edge lengths added up. So to find out the volume created when each of these edges is extended, we just have to denote h as the sum of the different types of edges. As each of these collective types of edges will give us one h. So if we denote h as the sum of each of the types of eight edges, we just need to add up 1 plus 3 plus 4. So 1 plus 3 plus 4 will give us 8. And as 8 pi is the coefficient of the r squared term, we can write that 8 pi is equal to b. Now, the final thing we have to take a look at is how the corners are being expanded in 
S of R. We found volumes for the regions of the edges, the faces, and the interior. So all that's left is this little eighth of a corner piece. So this corner piece, if you can visualize it, will look like the eighth of a sphere with radius r. But here's the thing. There are eight corners on the entire rectangular prism. Four on the top, four on the bottom. So if each corner is expanded to the eighth of the volume of a sphere with radius r, the total sum of all these little corner expansions, distance r away from any point of b, would give us a volume that's equal to the volume of the sphere with radius r. And as the volume of a sphere with radius r is just 4 over 3 pi r cube, that gives us the r cube term we're looking for. So we see that 4 pi over 3 is the value of a, as it is the coefficient of the r cube term. So now we have our values for a, B, C, and D. D is 12, C is 38, B is 8 pi, and 4 pi over 3 is A. So now we just need to do the operation it says in the problem and take that value. So in the problem, it asks us to compute what B, C by 80 is. B is 8 pi. And C is 38. A is 4 over 3 pi. And D is 12. Canceling out the pi from both sides, we see that this comes down to 8 times 38 divided by 4 times 12. Once again, we can cancel out a 4 from the 8 and the 12, so we're left with a 2 and a 3, and then multiplying the numerator and denominator by 3, we're left with 3 times 2 times 38 divided by 4 times 3. The 3's can cancel out once again, so we're left with 2 times 38 divided by 4. Canceling one final 2 out, we get the value is equal to 38 by 2, or in other words, 19. And just like that, we've solved this problem. Now, I really love this problem because it made you think inside and outside the box, quite literally. And it's a really cool approach on a 3D geometry problem that I've actually never seen on many tests. I could only solve it because I have experienced solving these problems, showing that the best way to become a better problem solving on competition math is just to keep on solving more problems. Because that'll give you experience to solve unusual and cool problems like this. So. Next time you see a problem like this, think back on the experiences you've had similar to this. And maybe if you're smart enough, you could come up with a new problem solving solution on your own to solve the problem you're struggling on.